My name is Zugi Savannah and I am an author. Um, I consider myself a feminist. I have considered myself a feminist since I was ever in my life. I can't remember a time when I wasn't, but because I come from a tradition of women who may not have known the word feminist, but they very much always seem to support. Having Amat Haidu here as a headliner, who has really paved the way for many of us. I remember when I was a young woman, very young girl in the 80s in Zimbabwe, and she was there that time, and she was coming for Zimbabwe International Book Fair. And when I saw her, that's the first time I realized that there were women writers. Prior to that, I thought all writers were men, or if they were women, they were white. My views on feminism, uh, there isn't one type of feminist. You know, I, I think uh, because we are all different people in the same way that, um, you know, not all people, not, not all women are the same and not all human beings are the same, for instance. Um, there isn't one type of feminism, but I think what, what's most important is really just to support each other, to uh, hold each other in love and care. And uh, if I don't agree with you, I think it's okay for me to do so. But uh, I generally, my personal feeling is that if I don't agree with you, I should personally um, call you aside if you're a woman and we talk about it privately rather than uh, talk about it uh, publicly because as women we already get a lot of flogging and as African women in particular we already get a lot of criticism when we have any simple smallest independent thought so yes and uh, I generally write on uh, literature and humanity and you know things that bother me at whatever time and uh, also like how we're also interconnected and certain things. So for instance, I think in a certain column I talked about how um, women in South Africa and in Kenya and in Nigeria have had their skirts ripped off for wearing something too short by a bunch of misguided men with some applause from patriarchal women or what uh, Pumla Gola likes to call phallic women. And, 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 and this is a problem that we all have and that we all encounter, but at the end of the day, it's, uh, you know, it, it should, should, should that be, and then it's done in the name of, it's not our culture, you know. But we live in very hot climate, so when somebody is saying it's not our culture and then we look at the culture or dress, you know, a couple of centuries ago, or even a century ago, uh, they were not they were not like long robes or anything like that so it makes you wonder you know uh, those who are you know upholders of patriarchy what they believe it means upholders of Africa uh, patriarchy and those who consider themselves upholders of Africanness uh, what they consider Africanism you know and yeah you realize they don't read enough they don't know their history enough the name of the panel was Men Who Write Women. It was a, it was a very enlightening conversation. Uh, you know, uh, when you read Tony Khan's uh, Carnivorous City, you travel through Lagos in a way that no book has made me do before. You know, and, and I'm, I'm somewhat more familiar with Lagos than a whole lot of people on this continent uh, who are not uh, Nigerian. So it was really lovely to be able to maneuver that and see that other side of the mainland and the island through his eyes. And, uh, but also really to be able to look at, at, at class and, 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 and wealth and poverty. And so what happens is if somebody has been living in poverty and then suddenly they come into all this money, no matter how principled they consider themselves, would they be willing to go back to that poverty? But it says a lot that uh, the main character, Abel, becomes who he is because his brother has disappeared and then he gets into this space where he is called in and he is an academic, he's a lecturer, uh, but it, it takes him going to his brother's criminal lifestyle, you know, and, you know, signing off on his brother's businesses that he knows nothing about that he becomes 
this guy and he starts thinking, do I want to go back? You know, is this something that I want to go back to? And, uh, and, and this is perhaps what we as a continent have become. We've got into a space where we have decided that our education and our healthcare are not so important because the people who run these ministries, who are in charge of them, they have enough money, they've robbed us enough that they're able to fly outside of the country. So we don't pay our doctors and nurses enough, we don't pay our teachers and lecturers enough. And then they end up having to sell papers, they end up having to do extra lessons, they end up having to, you know, be in uh, cohorts with like guys in India, doctors in India, so that they can do medical tourism, you know. And uh, with the middle class, well, the so-called middle class, we're not really middle class, we don't earn enough, uh, collude because we fundraise. When you get sick, we fundraise for you, as opposed to holding the leadership accountable.